been a long time. A long time. But it doesn't seem long enough for all the things I can remember. From what you tell me, this man gives one a lot of things to remember him by. Look at that gate. Larger than life, huh? That's him all over. You sure you're not exaggerating? Darling, it's possible to live so much in the past that finally it affects one's judgment. I've never been able to judge him. Too near him for too long. Loved him too much. Hated him too much. You mustn't feel this way. He's only a man. Yes, but a man who can twist you and warp you. I'm glad I'm rid of him. But you're not. You've never been rid of him. You've talked of no one else since we first met. Darling, you mustn't let him have such a hold on you. Please, sir, may I have your invitation card? Of course. Yeah. Thank you. It's quite all right. I'll not announce as Mr. Van Dyke is speaking. That way, sir. Thank you. I'm afraid we're rather late. An understanding of the functioning of various societies can be reached. Understanding of and sympathy for divergent cultural patterns are certainly basic to the attainment of our goal. Such a foundation, consequently, might, in its small but human and intimate way, serve the all-important cause of world peace. That's Van Dyck. My friends, I've enjoyed the battle of life, and I've tasted defeat. I've enjoyed the fruits of victory to the full. But after the dread lesson of the last few years, I think that all of us are a little weary of victories and battles, whether great or small. We want peace. I may assure the Undersecretary and his colleagues from the State Department, I may assure our friends, the delegates of the United Nations, that I am not proposing to take over alone and unaided the functions of their great organization. I can offer only the peace foundation which I have described to you. It will need a home. Mr. Secretary and gentlemen, I ask your joint acceptance of this house and the 3,000 acres of ground surrounding it. The foundation will need funds. I ask your joint acceptance of an endowment fund of $25 million. Thank you. Impressed? It must mean a great deal to own this house. I wonder why he wants to give it away. Oh, but you miss the point, young lady. It's for the cause of peace. Mr. Vendig wants peace. Low London. Sorry. George says it's taxes. Yes, being a realist, I've got it all figured out. To begin with, take the taxes on this place. I happen to know them. They're murder. Yes, but that's the 25 million. No, it still has to do with taxes. George, you've got to learn to think on a bigger scale. This beautiful young lady knows what I mean in a word. Peace. Well, it seems to me any effort for peace should be praised, whatever the motive. It wasn't peace in the world I was thinking of. I was thinking of the peace within within Woodruff Vendig's soul. Paul, which would you rather say? Vendig's soul or taxes? Taxes, every time. <laughs> Besides, if he wanted peace, what are you doing here? Well, you're all talking as though he's just died and we're here to criticize the remains. Vendig is still very much alive. If you'd be so good as to step into the study, Mr. Lambton. Mr. Vendig's personal request. Yes. This way, sir. I know the way. Yes, sir. Those are the first businessmen I've ever met who are like what businessmen are supposed to be. George told you he was a realist. A realist has to question the motives behind such a big gesture as this tonight. Why? Why not accept it for what it is? A man's hope for the future. Perhaps they know Vendig better. Possibly a man can change. I hope you're right. Because if you're not, there's a very grim future in store for this world. Vic, when a man believes in something, and it's a good thing. It's wonderful how his past can become his past. Really. Those men said Bendig wanted to save his soul. Perhaps he could, if he had your charity.
handshaking must still be going on. Oh, this is beautiful. That's his yacht, the far away. His press agents will be working overtime. They'd have you believe that on the stroke of 12, he leaves the house, steps aboard and sails away. Nobody knows where. But he has to go away. That's part of his new life, don't you see? I thought you weren't coming. I waited and everybody else came, but not you. I meant to be on time, but I took the wrong road. I thought you still bore a grudge. All of this wouldn't have meant very much if you had held out on me. Maybe you have. Isn't taking the wrong road one of those mistakes that happens when you want it to? Subconsciously. I'm sorry, I haven't analyzed myself in days. You don't think I'm sincere? Let's say I'm reserving judgment. Sounds kinder. Vic, when a man is ambitious for the kind of success that I used to dream about, it's inevitable that a lot of people are going to be hurt. He doesn't know that. He's too busy. He's fighting too hard. Then he reaches the top. Whatever the top may be for him. And he has a chance to stop. Think. That's when the pain of all those people comes back to him. He starts to be. That's when he starts to be a little afraid. Mallory, this is Horace Vendig, our host. Host, Miss Plague. How do you do? I'm so glad to meet Vic's oldest friend. Mallory's quite a pianist, Hoss. You'd have known her name immediately if you'd been interested in music. See a resemblance? She's like. like Martha. I know. Are you related to the Burnside? There's no relationship with Martha, Hoss. In a way, I'm sorry. Vic has told me so many things about Martha Burnside. What kind of things? Just nice things? What else could I say about Martha? Of course. Oh, it's funny, I do a great deal of remembering myself. I rarely ever talk about it. We do go a long way back. Don't we, Vic? the current is five miles an hour six about four huh that's what you say if you were doing the paddling all right i'll paddle do it downstream it's easier come on that's not fair i gave you best in swimming because you're the best swimmer and we all know it but i'm the best with the paddle and you ought to let me show martha i want that pants look out we'll be getting a bath <laughs> fingers to the bone teaching brats whose mothers I wouldn't let take in my washing when I was a girl. Freddie Atwood, you keep on with those scales till I tell you to stop. Look at that suit. A suit I paid nine dollars for that I didn't pick up in the street. 
I couldn't help it, Ma. That's just what your father used to say when he came home with every cent of his pay gone. I'll make some money, Ma. I'll make enough for plenty of suits. Yes. He could brag, too. You talk about earning money. What do you do? Sneak off and go fishing. I wasn't fishing. Don't you lie to me now. What were you doing? Answer me! Did you hear? Freddy? Is Horace all right, Mrs. Vendick? Horace? Why, yes, certainly. Thank heavens. Where is he? I must see him. There you are, Horace. I'm so thankful. You brave, wonderful boy. It wasn't anything, Mrs. Bruce, huh? What's all this? What's Horace done? Why didn't he tell you? My Martha would have drowned if Horace hadn't saved her. Why didn't you tell me this? You never gave me a chance. Well, I think he's a hero. I think you should be proud of him. I know that. I don't need anyone to tell me that, Mrs. Burnside. Just thanking him seems so little. Isn't there something you need, Horace? Something we can do for you? Nothing. Nothing at all. Thank you. Well, please let him come to our house tomorrow night for supper. Vic and Martha are going to be there, and some of the other girls and boys. And Mr. Burnside will want to see the boy who saved Martha's life. It's just for children, you know. Sure, I'll come, ma'am. He can't. He has somewhere else to go. But, Ma! Shut up. We've never been good enough for you up until now, Mrs. Burnside. Because of your money, I suppose. Mrs. Fenwick. Not good enough, indeed. I'll have you know that before my marriage, I was a Woodruff of Maine. If that means anything to you. That's no way to talk, Ma. Mrs. Burnside don't mean anything like what you think. Thank you, Horace. I know you understand. Goodbye, Mrs. Fenwick. I'll try to come, Mrs. Burnside. Horace. Come here. me when I took Martha home. You ought to have heard Mr. and Mrs. Burnside when you told them what you'd done. Ah, oh, drop it. What's the matter? Nothing. Where are you going? Waterfront. What for? Not to see your old man. Yeah? Oh, boy. Can I come with, Horse? If you want to. Hello, Miss Bella. Hello. Howard, ain't it? No, ma'am, it's Horace. And this is my friend Vic. Good evening. Is my father in? Your mother never sent you here. No, I came myself. I thought she said you was never so much as to set eyes on your dad again. I got a right to see my own father. Well, he ain't in. And if you came after anything, you may as well skidoo. Take a look around, see the business we're doing. Well, look. Look who's here. Horace, my boy. Hi, Bella. Hi, time I got back. Did you lose your shirt again? Never mind if I win or I lose. <laughs> it's my lucky day when my boy comes here. Well, well, Horace. Hello, Pa. Mm, I see you've grown, eh? And you brought a friend. How are you? Pleased to meet you, sir. Yeah, I'll bet you've got an appetite, eh? Both of you. Light up, Bella. Let's make the place look cheerful. Well, boys, what do you have? 
Chowder, chicken lobster, the best of everything, eh? Today I struck it rich. Order up, huh? No, thanks, Pa. I just came to see you. I've already had supper, thank you. Hey, your mother, she know you've come? Oh, no. Only I, I wanted to. Miss your father, eh? That's nice. I'm glad to see my boy's got a nice friend like you. Thanks, Mr. Vendig. We've been friends ever since Hoss came to the school. Oh, that's fine. How's it coming, son? All right, I guess. Well, you, you have fun, eh? Play games, you go to parties? I could, only... Oh, it's like that, is it? That's the best you got? It don't matter. Uh, I haven't seen my boy for two years. So you came to see your father even though you're not supposed to? Well, you certainly came on the right night. You know how much is in here? Must be an awful lot. Well, it's fifty-eight dollars. And it don't smell like clam chowder. I got the right tip, see? And I made use of it. Let me tell you something, son. Opportunity knocks on every man's door once. Just once. I know. Well, go after it. Grab it with both hands. Don't let nothing stand in your way. Yes, sir. All you gotta do is figure out what the common people gotta have and grab it tight. <laughs> well, here's ten dollars for you. For yourself. For a real good suit. Three for a pair of shoes. And a couple more for a shirt and some neckties, huh? Well, where do I come in? Don't make a joke, Bella. Give me that money. No joke about it. You owe me four weeks' pay. I promise you I'll settle tomorrow, eh? I'll, I'll wait outside, Hoss. Go on, get out. You can take your friend with you. Settle, eh? Out of what? You owe me 60, you win 58. And give half of that to somebody else's kid. Give it here, it's mine. Listen, get out of this quick, huh? Come on, he's her kid, ain't he? Let her look out. Now, fellow, I give you the stockings, the perfume. Come on, kid, give it here. Look, I got a chance to go to a real big house tomorrow. Go on, get out. Go home and ask your mother for a new suit. And as for you, I told you never to let that kid near me. If he ever comes here again, I'm through. go home. You know, Pa's your mother. Well, I guess she's sharp sometimes, like you say, but... Well, you know me, I'm no baby. But sometimes a fella could tell things to his mother. You'd be surprised how much they understand. Good luck. Thanks. Allowed to stand in our way. I can't. And I won't, Arthur, because of the boy. If we could take him with us, Kate. But as they say, no children. If his worthless father could look out for him. If only he had some relation. It's cruel. Downright cruel. There. Don't cry. Oh, Alfred. Dear one.
I'm so sorry to hear that, and so will... Horace, something bad is the matter. What is it? Come in here. No, ma'am. No, ma'am, I can't. I'm going away. Tonight. Going away? What do you mean? Not from your home. I haven't got a home. Horace, don't say that. What about your mother? I haven't got... <laughs> there, there. Don't cry. Tell me all about it. Be brave. Be a man. I don't want to be a man. Never. I wish there weren't any men in the whole world. Mother, what is it? Nothing. Never you mind. Go upstairs and put on your robe and tell your father to come out here at once. Then go over to the coach house and turn down the bed in the little room. Yes, Mother. And Mother said this was to be your home. And Father said he'd see you through high school and into a real good position. All because you saved my life, Horace. He says he can never do enough for you. Lord Jeffrey, Weapon Boots, so. though. Your choice. You're the birthday girl. Well, how about your card song, Mr. Burnside? Well, if you can play it, I can sing it. Well, uh, clear your throat, because I know them all. <clears> the <throat> Colorado School of Mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I asked for that one. Well, let's see. Uh, how about yours, Vendig? Well, the fact is... Horace is in business. Isn't, isn't there a class song for financiers? Harry, you've got the best voice of the lot. Why don't you sing Fair Heart? Sure. Loyal, but I wish I'd stayed here and gone to Harvard. Is your father a Dartmouth man? I'd have seen Martha more often. Did you notice tonight? Notice what? She wasn't wearing my fraternity pin. Well, maybe I've been away so long that we've drifted apart. Of course, some people would say that it was just a boy and girl affair when I left for college. Maybe she feels that way. I don't know. I've done everything I can. I write every week. But doesn't she answer you? Yeah, if you can call them answers. But she doesn't tell me where I stand. I tell you, Hoss. I can't study because of her. I'm way behind in my subjects. Why don't you have a talk with her? I can't. Hoss, 
You know her so well, living in the house all these years and growing up with her. You mean I could do it? I wish you would. Tell her that I... Tell her that... Well, you know what to say. Sure. You ought to come into insurance, Vic. Not a moment then to even think about girls. It's not like you to treat Vic that way. I did answer his letter. He says you tell him nothing. I tell him about you? That's what I mean. Good friends or not, it's just the sort of thing that I'd resent if things were turned around. Turned around? How? Well, you know what I mean. If I were in love with you. Don't scold me, Horace. I don't mean to. But why make Vic miserable? You're going to marry him eventually. Am I? Well, aren't you? No. And it's time I told him. Say, I really think you mean it. I do, Horace. I mean it enough to go in right now and tell him. Well, what is it? What's come between you? You. You've always been there. Here, I mean. But it never occurred to me. Always, Horace. Always. Martha, listen, I never said a word to make you feel like this about me. I, I never did a thing. But you wanted to. Tell me you wanted to. Yes. For a long time. Oh, Horace, darling. And I was thinking of transferring to Harvard. Well, Hoss, it's the case of the best man wins. I guess you're it. Say you're happy for us, Vic. Promise me you'll see us often. Cross my heart. Could I talk to you alone for a minute? Of course. your house. Thanks, Vic. I can't say I'm unhappy. And I don't want Martha ever to be either. I'll try my very best. You'd better, Hoss. Because Martha will never mean any less to me than she does right now. So help you, Hoss Vendig, if you ever do anything to hurt her. few words with you. Certainly, sir. In here. Sit down, Horace. Thank you, sir. I've just sent Martha upstairs. She just told her mother and me that, um, well, she says you're engaged. Well, I'm glad she told you, Mr. Burnside. On her 18th birthday. You're not too well settled yourself. Mr. Burnside, I've loved your daughter ever since that day on the river. Uh-huh. I'll ask the firm to transfer me. There's an opening in Pittsburgh. In time, she'll forget all about me. What kind of talk is this? Well, as I understand you, sir. You misunderstand me, Horace. Mr. Burnside. It's time to cut out the Mr. Burnside. Isn't there a shorter word a man has for his father? Father-in-law? Oh, thank you, sir. Dad, huh? Yes, sir. Well, there's a lot to consider. Have you been at the Shawmut Indemnity? Now, let's see. Uh, two years next month. And, uh, you look on this as your future career? Well, I've been doing very well there, as you know, sir. Uh, Dad, but if a man's going to provide the sort of home that Martha ought to have, he's got to have a college education. Oh, these days it certainly means a good deal. It's an idea, quite an idea. I have a little put by. You have? Is it, uh, is it anything much? Just over 300. Well done, my boy. Of course, it won't go a long way with college costs being what they are, but some of these smaller places, the fees are moderate. 
And uh, from a business point of view, there are more go ahead oh, than but say. College means only one thing to me. Dad. Huh? Harvard. Harvard, eh? Hmm. It's a good school. Oh, it's it, it's more than that, sir. It's a it's a good investment. Can you get yourself into this fall? You mean it? Well, if I could find an opening to work on the campus. Oh, no, no, no. I look on this as an investment, Horace. I'm not a wealthy man. I may have to have a little talk with my banker. But this is for you and Martha. And I want you to go through college on the same basis as Vic and Walter and the rest of them that were here tonight. And to come out ahead of them. I'm two years behind. You'll catch up. You've got the brains. You've given me the kind of home I never had. I can't ever repay you. Not another word about it. Make your arrangements. You can keep your room on here until you get yourself settled at Cambridge. Martha! Uh, Florence! Ah. Oh. There you are. Well, um, Horace and I have come to a little understanding. Oh, Daddy, I'm so happy. Hmm. Horace. Don't build your house with keyholes. A man can't ever plan a surprise around here. Well, you have no surprises for me. Hmm? Yeah. Sped up. you're going away from me. Maybe I'm going away from everything that's, that's any good. Only across the river. It's not far away. You'll be home every Sunday. I don't know. There's something inside me. Martha, it makes me do things that I don't know. That night at your party, when I asked you, you remember? Yes, always. I didn't love you then. Maybe because you were Vic's girl. What other people have, I want. Maybe I was thinking of Harvard. I wasn't six girl. I never was. Do you love me now? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's 
so much I'm scared. But darling, what of? Myself. The harm I could do to you. And to me. Nervous and upset. That's why you're talking this way. I love you, but... but... I love you. But as the time should come... On the program, the freestyle relay will decide the winner of this meet. Representing Harvard, Luce, Wright, Bennington, and Vendig. Hooray for Woody! Woody? Who's Woody? Morgan. If you don't know the name of your future son in law, it's Horace Woodruff Vendig. Hmm. I still like Horace. So do I, but here they call him Woody. Good enough. Murphy. Anderson, McGinnis, and Tushinsky. So that's your great Woody Bendy. I tell you, so Woody's going to rank with Charlie Brickman. Fennell and McKinney. Money marks, get set. He sits right in front of me in the economics class. Three times a week, that is. Well, then, what's to prevent your asking him to have supper with us? Well, maybe he has another date. You'd better do it, Brad, or I'll march right into that dressing room and ask him myself. Oh, all right. you like our team? You're out. Thanks. I'm sure the rest of the boys would appreciate that. Let's go to the Puritan for service. You can have some hot chocolate and cake at home if you like. I'm afraid you'll have to run along without me. Oh. Why? Well, I promised to go over my economics notes with young Bradford Duane. He has a quiz coming up tomorrow. Young Brad Duane? He's the grandson of old Henry Bradford Duane, the yes, shipping sir. man. His mother was a, a Sims, the banking family, Norton Sims. The Sim sisters. I'm so proud of you. Winning a swimming meet and teaching economics all in the same evening. Are you spending this weekend at all? Yes. But don't anybody wait up for me. Good night. Good night. Good night, Horace. Fine swimming. Thank you, sir. There you are, William. The car's right up the street. Oh, good. Susan, help Mr. Vandig to milk and sugar. Mr. Vandig likes lemon. Thank 
Thank you, Susan. Bad, eh? What? This. I told you it was going to be tough. But anyway, now we can ask you here instead of always having to go out. Once you've passed one of Mother's Thursday horrors, everything's official. Official? Yeah, you know what I mean. You're calling on Sue. Oh. Why haven't you brought him here before? Well, I didn't think... At least this one's a gentleman. Mother likes you. Mother likes you. That's because Mother's a peach. The acid test is Aunt Libby. And here she comes. What do I do? What do I say? You don't do anything. If she likes you, you'll find it out. You're not in training now, Woody. So you don't have to drink this swill. Brad, take him in the billiard room and get him a good drink. You've arrived, Mr. Bendick. Shipping and steel, those three, the backbone of the country's economy. And that's precisely what I told Mr. Harding. Excuse me, Uncle Norton. This is Woody Vindig. He's at school with me. Vindig, Vindig? Yes, sir. My Uncle Norton Sims. Mr. Sims? Mr. Oh. Bigelow, Mr. Prescott, Mr. Abbott, and Mr. Wiley. How do you do, sir? Yes, um, uh, some of our clients, as I suppose, some of yours are interested in these recent aircraft issues. An interest I very firmly discourage. Well, personally, I wouldn't touch them. Too unstable. Liquidations, merger. Yet I hear there's a house been organized to deal in airplane stocks exclusively. Oh, it's incredible. Financial suicide for them and a fraud perpetrated on their customers. Oh, but they're very responsible people, Mr. Sims. Latimer, Hilton, and Morrissey of Detroit. They've just underwritten a $4 million issue of Gleason biplane fives at $10 par. Oh, well, 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 no, 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 just a moment. Uh, go ahead, young man. The books were closed on Tuesday the 16th with the issue oversubscribed. And on the curb market today at closing, the stock was quoted at 12 and an eighth. Oh, maybe something in these flying well, machines. Give me a call. Uh, thinking of the brokerage business as a career? Well, that depends. Some of these new firms that are forcing their way onto the New York Exchange, I'd just as soon join a bookmaking concern. Bookmakers. That's it. Exactly what they are. But I suppose the class of investors in the market today don't really care about that. So you've noticed that, too? Oh, yes, sir. Anybody with 10% of the price of a share on the curb market. Even my tailor. <laughs> It'll be boot blacks next. Mr. Sims, I've learned a great deal in the last hour. Been a pleasure. Uh, let me see. Uh, what's your name again? Vendig, sir. H. Woodruff Vendig. Woodruff, eh? My mother was a Woodruff from Maine. Uh, banking people? No, sir. Fisheries and lumber. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I, I mustn't detain you. Oh, well, just a moment. If you have a morning this week, say, any time after ten, I, I'd like you to come in for a talk. Oh, I'd like very much to, Mr. Sands. Good night, sir. Uh, good night. Well, did it happen? It happened. It's about time. Tell me about it. You ought to know. You arranged it. My new title is Assistant Manager, Industrial Securities Division, New York Branch. You like it? I like the New York part of it. I'll be there. Now, aren't you glad I persuaded you to give up Harvard? Just think, an assistant manager and at your age. Well, go on. Oh, there's plenty of time for that. I took the rest of the day off to celebrate. And pack. And pack.
So we're engaged. Yes, but secret as the grave. I don't see why. I'd shout it. So would I if I were the one with the money. Have it your own old-fashioned way. I'll be in New York by the first of the year. We'll have fun. I'm sorry, but I have to say goodbye to these people. Is it really that important? Well, they've just been very good to me. I get jealous if you're even sentimental about other people. That's why I'm leaving Boston without any regrets. What about you? Is there anyone here you're going to miss? Here, take this next row to the right. Good night. Can't I wait for you? No, you drive on home. I'll call you the first thing in the morning. I'm sorry. You're tired? No. It's too late for a show. Why don't we stay home? I'd rather walk. Down by the river? I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, too. Anyway, they decided I deserved a booth, so they made me assistant manager of a bond department. Horace, that's wonderful. I had some news today, too. Only I'm not going around like an old grump. I'm happy about it. Martha. Darling, I'm telling you something. In a minute. Right now, you've got to listen to me. This job is in New York. Oh. Well, I, I like Boston better, but if I I've got to you... tell you straight out. You won't be with me. Not if we're married. Don't they pay enough? They pay very well. But there I'll meet the right people. I'll begin to make deals on my own account. I'm going far, Martha. And fast. And alone. I can't be with you. Because you don't want me. I shall never want anybody else. But I can see the road I've got to travel. I can see where it leads. See the sacrifices I've got to make. And I'm the first of them? No. I am. You love me? You really love me, and yet you can turn your back on everything yes, that we... Yes, I've got to. I haven't any choice. I've got to. I stole you from Vic. You might have been happy. I tried to tell you that I wasn't any good for you, but you wouldn't believe me. I knew it already. I knew it when you first came to live with us. I watched you. I could see it all the time. But when I told you... Yes. Because you told me. I hope that by loving you and being close to you, like your wife, I hoped you'd change. But I suppose I wasn't a big enough person. Maybe I didn't love you enough. And now you hate me. When you can't help yourself. No. I can't hate you for that. Any more than if you told me you were terribly ill. Perhaps you are. If you want to know, I love you. I shall always.
I'm sure you manage most of your affairs more cleverly than that. Thank you. You're very young. And very ambitious. And may I say that ambition is a high climb with no way of getting down. You may be right. I'll have to find out for myself. You might spare yourself a lot of bumps and bruises if you listen to Mr. Bendig. His philosophy today is that success doesn't mean a thing. You won't give away so much as an inch, will you, Vic? No, but that's your fault, Hoss. You've always handled me so easily that I've got my guard up. And let's face it, you haven't done anything but talk. But I have to talk to somebody, and you're the only one I can talk to. All my life, I've spent collecting things that I can't trust. There's nothing that's part of me. The money I've made, it's, it's no more than this house, and you saw how easily that was transferred. Tell me more about yourself. There's really not much. I work rather hard. As a matter of fact, most of my time is taken up by my music. All of it? There's not enough left to share, if that's what you're driving at. Surely you can't refuse your host the first dance. Please. Just this one. to be congratulated. Don't you want Vic to have cause for congratulations? Yes. Up until ten minutes ago. Now I wish he didn't even exist. Or were away exploring another planet or anything would leave you here with me. But I might like exploring another planet. It sounds exciting. What do you want? Mallory? Vic, you've had so many evenings with Mallory. Give me just part of this one. Well, since you put it that way and remembering the past, the only answer I can possibly give you is no. Oh, well, at least let's all have a drink together. <laughs> Old fashioned martini. <laughs> He wants to make his peace. Me before anyone, I'd imagine. But you, what harm has he done you? You're a coarse, Krista. <laughs> Did he do that to you? Your hair was pure gold once. Now it looks like brass. <laughs> Fool hairdresser of mine uses a hard rinse. Don't stare at me, Buck. You make me nervous. I remember the day. I don't want to remember any day. I came in here for a drink and I... And you found a memory. What else are we here for? But to remember. Sit down. No, Buck. And we remember. Oh! Chris. He frightened me. Why do you have him here? Who? Oh, I'm afraid this man caused a little trouble, Mr. Bendig. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Krista. There must be some fun here somewhere. I'll have him escorted out. No. Mr. Mansfield is my guest. I hope your presence here means that my letter was taken in the spirit in which I intended it. Means I came here to see if all this stuff was another of your confounded tricks. I'm old. Maybe you think I'm weak. Blind, too, like Samson, eh? Hello. He pressed his palms against the pillars of the temple. Just say the word, Mr. Vendig. Tell this vermin to stand away from me. 
Lieutenant. Get me a drink. Charles, there's a bottle on your left. Mr. Mansfield, you introduced me to a lot of things. Including this. It's 21 years old. Sorry. I wish that hadn't happened. A man doesn't go very far in life without leaving some rag ends behind him. Who was that? That's all that's left of an emperor. Now he's just an old man who's lost his money and his wife. Since his wife was all he lived for, I suppose he's dead. I understand you do put a little corn and oil on his grave, occasionally. Doesn't that help? It's still a grave. We can quarrel, we often have. But the only time we ever split was you who forced us into it. I know. Maybe we should have stayed that way. Perhaps I didn't know when I was well off. Vic. I never turned my back on you. It was you who turned your back on me. Vic, it's wonderful to see you back. We've a lot to talk about. Of course, and the first is, how is South America? Oh, it makes New York look like a one-room apartment. There's air down there, space. Wherever you look, you see the sky. It's the new frontier, Hoss. Maybe the last one. Did you ever think of that? That a fortune's made every day. You ought to be coming back with me. This stinks of ledgers and stocks and bonds. Come down there and breathe. Did you ever get within grasping distance of one of those fortunes? My poor misguided friend. See, observe. This little bit of paper is known as a bank draft. Would you read it to me? Three hundred thousand dollars. My partners and I spent a cool million. Not bad pay for a few years' hard work. Well, when do we leave? Sorry, Vic. It's not enough. No. I didn't think it would be. I also think, Mr. Vendig, that you want too much. There's no such thing as too much. You didn't make a fortune, Vic. You were well paid for your work, that's all. Fortunes are made here on Wall Street. Sure, sure. Who's the young lady? Her name is Susan. Nice. I like old-fashioned names. Susan, Ruth, Prudence, Martha. You've grown very devious, Vic. You're not being very straight from the shoulder yourself. Did you expect me to believe what you said in your letter, that she turned you out? If ever a girl more obviously threw her heart and soul at someone's feet... You do that very neatly. I've become a wicked old man. Martha has two very good eyes and intelligence. It didn't take her long to realize that there would always be a struggle between our love and my ambition. Well, she was right. I can say that for her. Why didn't she tell me? A letter, even a postcard. She knows I love her. I don't know. Pride, maybe. I searched everywhere for her. She seems to have dropped out of the world. I stopped off in Boston on the way here. Everything's changed. Martha gone, Mrs. Burnside moved away, the old man dead. What? Didn't you know he died? No. No, that's... that's wicked news. He was like my father, Vic. You mean no one wrote to you? No one told you a thing like that? Hoss, what happened between you and the family? Just because it's very painful for all of us. I had to make a clean break. There's one thing you've got to remember, Vic. I loved her. Of course. Don't pay any attention to me. I'm not only a wicked old man, I'm a suspicious one. I don't care what you are. You're fine with me. Thanks. Well, I'm glad to see you're doing so well for yourself anyway. H. Woodruff Vendig Incorporated. Sounds big. Are you going to marry the young lady? Why? Well, when a man keeps a girl's picture on his desk, it usually means... Hello? Yes, put him on. Now watch how we do it on the stock market. Hello, Mr. McDonald? Why don't you take my suggestion and let me go before the board of directors personally? The prospectus I sent you only gave the bare figures. I see. Yes, I understand, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Well, Vic, where were we? The man said no. Yes. And a big operation, Vic. A chance that may come only once in a man's career on Wall Street. 
But Montgomery Trust, that's the bank in which this McDonald is one of the chief stockholders, can't see it. But that doesn't make sense. I may be only an engineer. For an engineer, the interesting thing is not where I'd get the money, but what I'd do with it. Have you ever heard of the Mansfield Utilities Empire? No. Am I ignorant? Its polite name is Delta Bond and Share. It's an independent utilities company that exists in the shadow of one man, Buck Mansfield. The crazy fabrication is utilities empire. It's one strong man overriding a lot of weak ones. Drunk with power, capricious, whimsical, thinking his will is nature's law. But that's a monopoly. What holds it together? His personality. And right now, I'm beginning to wonder just how long that personality will stand up under pressure. Pressure? From you, Huss? You're dreaming. Of course I'm dreaming. The same dreams you had when you went to South America. Vic, this Mansfield is holding up communications, power, the very gas that a farm woman needs to cook her meal. And you need a quarter of a million? Well, 300,000 to be exact. It's nothing compared to what his holding companies represent. But Vic, this is David and Goliath. Hoss, I'm with you. How far? My 300,000. I believe in power, and I believe in people. And it's my job as an engineer to bring the two together. My partners and I, we took in electricity and we made poor people rich. We built bridges, and we turned enemies into good neighbors. Vic, we've been marking time for years, just for this moment. This buys you a partnership. You know what we're going to call it? Call it what you like. We'll free the power. And start the mill trolling. Put prices within reach of the smallest farmer. Right. Come back around 6 o'clock, Vic. I'll have the papers ready. Fine. I'm going to like working with your hoss. You're all right. Get me Miss Duane. Hello, darling. Oh, exhilarated. Yes, New York is wonderful. Who? Bruce Endicott McDonald. Certainly. You tell your young man there was a time when Mr. McDonald proposed to me on the 1st and the 15th of every month for six years. <laughs> she knows him very well, darling. I want Aunt Libby to make a date for me with McDonald anyhow, anywhere. It must be for tomorrow. And this is very important, darling, because it's going to decide when we'll get married. I'm sorry my bank was so unobliging yesterday. You have an interesting proposition. So interesting and so sound that I'm putting in 300,000 of my own. But you didn't tell us about that. I just don't like doing business with people who believe my word has to be backed by collateral. You're very proud. Yes. I don't mean that as a criticism, but doesn't this rule hamper you? It never has, and if it ever does, I still won't compromise. Bruce, if I lose one fish because of your chatter, let them talk, Aunt Libby. Rendig, speaking not for the bank, but for myself, What's your idea with Palmetto? What would yours be if you had just acquired the largest single block of voting stock in a company? Eventual control? Control with a purpose. The rates in Palmetto's territory will stand a 15% increase. Can the people pay it? Where else will they get power? There's no competition. Bendig, I'd like to join you. If you mean that, I'll tell you how you can participate. I've taken an option on 50,000 shares of Delta Bond and Share at 20. What's the price of admission? You put up $500,000 and I'll give you 20% of Palmetto. I like it. Speak to again. Too bad, Mr. McDonald. We'll do better with Mansfield. Excellent whiskey, Mr. Mansfield. Yes. Just old enough to vote. Wine of the country, my friend. Bourbon, the name given to kings and whiskey, the kings are gone, the liquor remains. Shall we resume? <laughs> Energy like yours, Mr. Bendick, is no doubt much to be admired on Wall Street between the hours of ten and three. But in this house and in this climate, well, allow me to say it approaches the being glorious. It's after three now, and as much as I appreciate your hospitality, I should have been on my way back to New York when you sat me down to lunch. Ah, speaking of lunch. Did I mention that the crayfish for the bis was taken this morning out of the stream on this property? You did. Now, if you wouldn't mind checking over my figures. Oh, no need to, Mr. Bendick. I have rather a good memory for figures, and names as well, particularly when they are linked with financial operations which may affect any of my enterprises. But mine are not likely to affect you as adversely. It would amount to a sort of junior partnership. I have only one partner in business as in life. I, uh, but go ahead. 
400,000 shares of Palmetto Light and Power, which I and my company, Vendig Incorporated, hold under option, represents a controlling interest in that company, which I am willing to yield along with 50,000 shares of Delta Bond and Share. Which you also hold under options at $20 per share. I see you've got around. Aye, very rarely. Since my Delta stock does, I like to be aware of where it is and what it is doing at any given time. As though it were a pet. Mr. Mansfield, it looks as though your pet had my collar on it. Are you positive of that, Mr. Benny? Just confident. Oh, oh I'm so sorry, Buck, dear. I, I was going to show you my new frock. Sorry? Why, darling? Vendy, the partner I refer to, my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Mansfield? How do you do? I, I never would have barged in like this if I'd known we had a visitor from the north. I'm very flattered. Mr. Mansfield has had the visitor since before lunch. Then we must both have you for dinner. You make us sound like cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Vending means to take an early train. Yes, I'm sorry. Please ask me again. I will. Right now. Do stay for dinner, Mr. Bendick, please. I may suggest that as she represents another 48% of Delta stock, Krista can outvote you. If I may try your telephone again. Of course. You may have repaired the line by this time. Excuse me. How do you like this one, Buck? Darling, excuse me. I love to see your little feet. The line's still dead. Oh, I am extremely sorry, my boy. I feel personally responsible. Meridian Telephone is one of our Delta Enterprises. But Krista and I will endeavor to make it up to you at dinner. Won't we, Krista? Meanwhile, you've had a long journey. Perhaps you'd like to relax and freshen up a little. Philip will show you to a room. Thank you. Ring for anything you want. You're very kind. Well, my pet, what do you think of our handsome young visitor? Oh, I don't know, Buck. What's he here for, anyway? When you and I are so happy all alone. Now... Are you married, Mr. Vendig? Not yet. Then I'm sure you must have the pick of all the beauties in the North. Oh, I'm afraid not. Perhaps because I'm too much interested in business. Oh, I'm sure one of them will change your mind. I might like that. To sum up, Mr. Vendick, let me see if I remember. For your two options, you want 20% of Palmetto back, a presidency in that company, and a seat on the board of directors of Delta. Your memory is perfect, Mr. Mansfield. And if I decline to yield, what grim alternative do Krista and I face? <laughs> Poverty? Despair? The most I can threaten you is that you'll have some concern. I've analyzed Palmetto's prospects, and after another year of operation, it will be eligible for additional franchises. Admirable, Wendy. I wish my own industrial engineers had been as thorough. What do you think, Krista? Oh, you know how little I know about these things. I am prepared to make a counter-offer, Vendy. Cash settlement for your options. My options cost me $800,000. You can go ahead from there. Ahead, Mr. Vendy, ahead. Oddly enough, I was retreating. I'm standing fast. My figure is a million and a half. This is mine. 300000 In full payment. That's wanton, Mr. Vendick, wanton. Besides, it's not yet yours, not until you endorse it. If I weren't your guest, Mr. Mansfield, I'd consider this an insult. But since I am, let me congratulate you on your sense of humor. I may not repeat the offer. I should hope not. $300,000, Vendick, is a lot of money to some people. Not to me. My nuisance value alone is higher than that. Your host, I will be glad to recall that it was you who used that term. 
I can't picture you as a nuisance, Mr. Vendig, under any circumstances. Mr. Manfield, resident. It's Mr. Hilton calling from Atlanta. Yes, Hilton. <clears throat> huh? Yeah. What? A raid. A raid, you said? Yes. Good. All this old business. Of course. And I wanted so much to talk to you about New York, Mr. Vendig. Yes. I go up there next week for shopping. Of course, there's nothing I'd like better. Good. Thank you, Hilton. Oh, yes, and my compliments to Mr. Haskell. Meridian Telephone. Good night. What are you doing? Reducing a nuisance to what it is actually worth. A rimless zero. How can you talk that way to Mr. Vendy? It's very neat. A dead telephone, a dinner party. I uh, regret to tell you, Vendy. Some sudden pool of stock market gamblers have raided Palmetto stock and torn a few gaps in debtor as well. So you rigged more than the telephone. They've hammered Palmetto down to two and Delta to 16. You don't seriously mean to pick up your option, $3 million on stock that has a market value of one million six. I see I have a great deal to learn. Yes. This is an expensive academy you come to for your first lesson. About you, I mean. May I use the telephone? The Haskell arranged it that it operates only on incoming calls. Are the trains still running north, or did you rig that too? No. Roberts is waiting to take you to the station, where you must send a telegram of, uh, let us say, condolence. Are you sure you don't own the telegraph company as well? Uh, let me see. Oh, no, I don't. I made a present of that to Mrs. Mansfield. Remember, my boy, the next time you go hunting big game, don't use a cap pistol. Fetch up the heavy artillery. Or try from ambush. Thank you. I'll remember that. Good night. <laughs> the man knows everything about us. He has sources of information that are like bulletins from a ticker tape. There's no doubt he has us in a corner. But, Mr. Bendick, let us hope this is only the first round. He's left us without a move. I, I feel trapped. Not a case of nerves, Mr. Bendick. Certainly not. It's just that I can't see an opening. We have one. We can exercise our options. Where would we get that much money? Montgomery Trust? It would be a little difficult, but uh, since I'm an important stockholder, they'll probably listen to me. You mean that? Yes. Mr. McDonald, there's only one way I can justify your confidence, and that is to bring off my part of the scheme. I have a couple of surprises for Mr. Mansfield, which should delight both you and the bank. You're going to be a smart operator, Andy. How about another outing next week? I'd like that. Oh, I have a friend who's coming into town, and likely my time will be pretty much taken up, but I'll try. I'll give you a ring, Mr. McDonald. Good evening, Mr. Bendig. Good evening. The lady's waiting for you. Third table on the left. Thank you, Sam. Good evening, Mr. Bendig. Good evening. Good evening, darling. The usual? Two champagne cocktails. Sorry I was so late. Keep you waiting long? The minute is too long. That's another thing I like about you. You make me feel so important. You are. So important, I can't wait to be with you always. Darling. It was a little difficult getting away this time. There have been too many of these shopping trips. Buck doesn't guess. No. It's just that he's so possessive. He wants me with him all the time. I don't blame him. I hate going home to him. I hate the thought that he might find out. Well, darling, you mustn't be afraid of him. I'm not afraid. I feel so guilty. Darling, that's ridiculous. He can't hold on to you as though you were a piece of property here, boy. But I am. That's just it, I am. You're going to forget your whole life with him after we're married. Darling. I knew your strength from the first moment. Let's go. Good 
That's what I hate. These speakeasies. Hiding in corners. So do I. But we have to go slowly. Darling Buck's got me in such a tight spot. I know. McDonald has every cent he can raise behind me, but it's not enough. Buck keeps holding that stock down. We're overextended. I've been thinking about it for a long time. I can help. Hello, darling. I suppose the obvious thing would be for me to say that I can explain everything. Well, I can. Not now. It's quite all right, dear. I think I understand. Susan. Krista, if you will excuse us for a moment. He'll probably make you pay someday because you saw this. I imagine this is no time for clever remarks. It had to happen. I'm just sorry you were here. It doesn't matter, darling. Matter. You're beautiful, Krista. Turn on the light. No, please. Turn it on. I want to get up. Why did you wake me when I was finally able to sleep? I'll have a headache until morning. Buck, sometimes you have utterly no consideration. Krista, darling. Please give me that negation. Don't hang over me. I don't want to be touched. Not even by me. I'm sorry, Krista. I love you so much that sometimes it just wells up in me. I can't control. You understand, don't you? Yes. I don't expect you to love me as much as I love you. How could you? And yet that's the very thing that frightens me. I want to build a cage around you. A cage of gold and precious stone. That's exactly what you've done. I've been in a cage ever since you bought me from my father, along with this land and the other chattels. Darling, what is it? I've offended you. No, you haven't offended me. You'd rather die than hurt my feelings. Yes. I know that. And you've a collection of French tapestries. You'd be ill if something happened to one of them. I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. I don't want to be a collector's item. Darling. Your headache. Please. 
Please go back to bed. No. Because now I have the courage to tell you a lot of things. And I may not have it in the morning. You've nothing to tell me. I've educated you. I've surrounded you with love and luxury. I've given you everything. Not you! You knew I'd see it someday. You couldn't always guard me from it. Well, I have seen it, and I don't want to let it go. I'm leaving you. It's only after. Not before. Is it someone I know? I think you know him very well. Just had the best of you in a business deal. Vendic. And you're the one who betrayed me with that land deal. Buck, I can't transfer my affection and not my loyalty. Krista, can he love you more than I do? And he give you more. <laughs> He'll give me youth, life, the things I've needed. You know what he's like. You can reach up and pull his hair and he laughs and fights back. He's fun, he's alive. He's like me. Do you think you can keep me now? Look. Look. Look at him now. sign over every control you have, you may yet save some of the board of directors. It's a little too late to save yourself. Here's the proof. Never mind. A touch of happiness in your voice is all the proof I need. Three out. Well, hello. Hello, Crystal. How is Paris? 
friendly, Vic, very friendly. That must have been nice. 44, Vendig Incorporated. Your floor, Mr. Lambert. Thanks. A very warm sort of homecoming. So many thousands of people down at the pier to kiss me ashore, I couldn't find my own husband. And he's quite preoccupied these days, Krista. The market's in a bad way. Be sure to be with him on Judgment Day, Vic. He'll need you to plead his case. Fine to see you back, Mr. Lambert. We've missed you. Thanks. It's fine to be welcome. I'll wait in my office till Mr. Vendig is free. Let me know, will you? Yes, sir. Mr. MacDonald, how are you, sir? Rather tired. Are you in town for another flying visit, Mr. Lambert? Yes, I got in late last night. I'm going to pull out again after I've had a few talks with Horace. I've spoken to him on the phone, but I haven't seen the old pirate in months. How is he? A pirate? Huh. I'm very serious, Mr. Lambert. I've been sitting here for four days waiting to see him. I think your partner is making me walk the plank. Four days? And for ten days prior to that, I called him repeatedly. He was either out or too busy to speak to me. Oh, there must be some mistake. Are you aware this is Mr. MacDonald of Montgomery Trust? Why wasn't he shown in to Mr. Vendig? I'm sorry, Mr. Lambton. Mr. Vendig is extremely busy. He gave strict orders that... What's your trouble? What do you want to see him about? My bank needs a loan. Five million or our depositors are wiped out. That bad? It's very simple. Too much of our resources were Dorchester stock, sold to us before this panic, as part of Vendig's carefully prepared short-selling campaign. But he wouldn't do that, not to you. We can't even discuss that point. He's already done it. That's all my fault. I'm personally responsible for what's happened to us. I allowed my friendship toward him to blind me to his peculiar ethical code. Well, he'll see you now, or you're going to witness a head-on collision. Tell Mr. Vendig I've arrived. Yes? Mr. Lambert has arrived, sir. He wants to see you. Just a moment. Do you wish to carry this on in Vic's presence, or would you rather keep it private? Tell him to come in in just about half a minute. Yes, sir. You've already told this to Vic. I could see it in his face. As a matter of fact, I haven't told him a word. Now, let's see. Where were we? Oh, yes. You were in Paris. That boy in Paris was nothing but a protege. He paints divinely. I thought of a very pretty speech of your own in which you said people with no creative talent ought to help those who have it. <laughs> Krista, are you trying to appeal to my sense of humor? No, you never had one. I asked you to come here because I don't intend for you to go back to the house. Everything that belongs to you is ready and waiting. As soon as you've checked into a hotel, let me know and I'll tell my lawyers where they may serve you. And with that, may I consider myself dismissed? If you care to put it that way. Oh, and without even the customary two weeks' notice. Don't try sarcasm on me, Krista. I might pull out your Paris record. How did you expect me to behave? Like a woman who had a husband she loved and respected? Have you given me a better life than I had with Buck Mansfield? I left him because I needed you. Wasn't it logical that I should leave you for the same reason? Quite. And you have. What have you given me in the five years we've been married? From the first moment you weren't kissing me, you were kissing 48% of Delta Bond and Cher. Vic, just as a matter of curiosity, and because I happen to like you, what do you think about our divorce? I'm sorry it had to happen. <laughs> and you never said a word about it. Not even to Vic. You just had to lie about it, didn't you, darling? Poor thing. You can't help it. What was the idea? Why tell her how many people know the story? Yes, I suppose you're right. Well, she trapped me so easily, I feel like a fool. Was it very unpleasant? Naturally. Don't you think I have any feelings? I often wonder. Hostens, when does MacDonald have to wait outside for four days? MacDonald? Now, wait a minute. Don't say his name as though it were something holy. He's a businessman who wants a tremendous loan, which we can very well afford to give him, not without collateral. Collateral? That's why I don't want to see him. What's the point? Hoss, I don't understand you. 
Everything in this office, almost every good thing in your life, was made possible by McDonald's faith in you. In you personally. It wasn't based on collateral. He didn't ask for anything but your word. He made Vendig Incorporated. Oh, no. I did. No, it was McDonald and Montgomery Trust. You went to him for help a dozen times, and each time he gave it to you freely, without question, without collateral. Now he's come to you. Vic, why don't you stick to building bridges? The man wants $5 million. Very well secured. His bank is basically sound unless he goes under. If he does, you'll take with him every small depositor on their books. Hoss, I don't know what you've got against him, but think of those people. I will when I retire. In the meantime, I'm thinking only of myself. All right. I won't talk to you as a friend, but as a partner. A silent one, Vic. Hoss, don't joke while MacDonald is suffering out there. It's vicious. What are you made of, anyway? I'm an adding machine. And as a result, you're so rich you can afford a conscience. Well, I'm not that rich. I still need a lot more. My job is to protect my interests and yours. business. Have they taken him away? You know, just now. Complications when a man dies like that. Questions, questions. Well, here's to you. Killer. Cut it out. Why didn't you put that gun to his head? Didn't you pull the trigger? I saved this company five million hard-earned dollars. Doesn't the fact that the man shot himself prove anything to you? He was a weakling. That's why I couldn't help him without security. I can't drink your liquor. It chokes me. Everything about you chokes me. Why did you pull him down, Hoss? Why do you pull down everyone who gives you a hand? Don't be a fool. How much respect do you think I have for myself, watching you at work and letting you get away with it while I share in the profits? You ought to realize that, so. That's my department. Well, let me tell you something. I don't like the people in your department. I don't like what they do. I don't like what they do to me, so I'm getting out. Vic! I need you. You don't need anyone. You're the only friend I have. And I hate your insides. Good reason to break with you, Hoss. But it wasn't only the McDonald affair that kept me away so long. Vic, this must be very embarrassing for Mallory. Will you dance with me, Mallory? Excuse me. Andy. Gone very far. You've been very clever. No cleverer than most men. But every time I saw something I wanted, I did say to myself, this I must have. Yes, I underestimated you, Vindy. You know, that's the first tactical error I'd ever made. I'm sorry it had to happen. But I'm sorry, too. Shall we change places again? Bible reading man. I wonder will I get time to read anything. Thou greatly despised. Pride of thy heart has deceived you. You whose habitation is high, who says in his heart, who shall bring thee down to the ground? Who you exalt yourself as the eagle, set your nest among the stars. Hence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Mallory. Oh, Vic's going to find my rap. We were about to say good night. But I don't want you to say goodnight. I want you to stay. But you'll be going away. Be sailing in a few minutes. Only if I choose. Nobody says to me, do this, do that. A very nice position to be in. I suppose that's what you worked so hard for. Please don't talk away from the point. I said I wanted you to stay. Sorry. Listen to me. 
I want you to understand what's been growing in my mind ever since the first time I saw you tonight. I love you. You've got to believe that. I love you. Please don't talk. Nothing that can ever happen will add to what I know now. I've been waiting for you, Mallory. I've waited ever since I was a boy. I've allowed myself only one dream. I didn't know what your name was in the dream, but it was you. If you'll believe that, Mallory, we'll have a life ahead of us that's beyond dreaming. I think you do love me. I think you do. Say it, Mallory, and come away with me. Mallory, it's time we left here. Most of the other guests have gone. Stop interfering, this is none of your business. Don't be a fool. This is my business. That makes it unpleasant, but it doesn't change things for me. I know. It never did. Your baggage is ready, Mr. Venting. And a few papers you wanted. I'll go out in the small lounge. Open the library safe and I'll be there in five minutes. We have much time, Mallory. All right, thank you. You see, I won't be with you. No. I don't see anything. Cars that way. I know. We're going to the pier. Why? I want to see him again. I want you to see him again. But we've seen him. We've looked at him for hours. That's enough. Vic, I don't know what you're afraid of. I'm afraid of losing you. And don't tell me I never had you to lose. I had. And he's not going to spoil it for me. Mr. Lambden and the young lady are on the pier. He spoils everything he touches. He takes the life out of it and leaves it to a rot. And it's not an obsession with him. He's made like that. But he won't see me. We'll hide if you like. What do you want to do? Gape at him? Ask for his autograph? Vic, you're being difficult. And you're building a wall between us. Don't you understand that? Let's look. Let's go back to the car and get out of here. No. Mallory. Vic, dear, no, I can't because you're so afraid. I've got to show you that you're wrong. He has no real hold on me any more than he has on you. Not if I'm right. You shouldn't want to keep me back. I knew I wasn't mistaken. I thought this is the way you'd go. Just as you are. Don't make any plans, Hoss. We came down to see you off, that's all. I asked you to stop interfering. You asked me to do a lot of things. For one thing, to forgive you. What did you think that would do? Change your nature? Get off this pier and off my property. You're in the way. Everything fits. Your whole pattern, your approach. The way you dislike people. The way you trample on them and justify the rottenest things a man can do. Because you're not merely a man. Not in your sick brain. You're much, much more than a man. Isn't that what you believed ever since we were boys? Yes. Don't try to impress Mallory. She has a mind of her own. Who has a mind of their own when a vending wants to make use of it? No, you haven't changed. The vendings in this world never change. That's what makes them vendings. They take. That's their nature. Now you want something you once threw away, then you'll have everything. You poor failure. You've always had the mark of failure on you. It's branded on you, the way you give in. Oh, the ideas you had, the ideals. What do you know about the things I think about their importance? Now listen to him, Mallory. This is Bendig. I tried to teach you things, but they frightened you. Nothing that's frightened can live in a jungle, and that's where we live. Thanks, Bill. That was well put, Fanny. We do live in a jungle. It's not a place where the weak inherit the earth. Of course, there's this to remember. Animals kill only for food or love. You and I, Vendix, spoil even the jungle. Because we kill for profit. For the taste of victory. For revenge. Hoss! And then... <laughs> then we destroy each other, Archer!
He wasn't a man. He was a way of life. Mm -hmm. 